Welcome to Mighty Married Moms. Join us at our kitchen table twice a week as the Mighty Married Moms, Debbie, Linda, Wendy, invite spectacular guests to weigh in on staying sexy, vibrant, and healthy, building marriages with soul-satisfying connection, raising happy, healthy, successful kids. Conversations with Mighty Married Moms will bring you closer to the life you really want. Episode 62. Hi, welcome back to Mighty Married Moms. Today we're going to talk about the conversation that we just had with Dr. Matt Bowers from the University of Texas. And we were talking to him about the um, effect of sports on creativity, future creativity. Future creativity, that's right. And the bottom line is um, their study, that they and they did a, a very thorough study, if you're interested in reading it, you can, but their study illustrated that there needs to be a balance between um, organized sports and the opportunity for kids to just do kind of pick up sports, basically play. And when there's a better balance, those young people grow up into adults who are more creative, which is of course what our society needs, right, in terms of entrepreneurial thinking and innovative thinking and all sorts of, of things exactly. like that. Exactly. So that was the gist of it. Let's, uh, let's so dive into it a little bit more. Not only does society need it, but yeah. what, isn't it more fun to be a creative, yeah. you know, and, and the creativity tests that, that to, um, to he, so he t- took a group of adults and he said, how creative are you? And uh-huh. then how much time did you spend in structured and unstructured sport time? Right. So that's kind of like they had a way the to questions. figure that out. They had a way to figure that out. But the creativity test, I was interested to hear that some of that was like, here's a set of constraints. How are you going to get out of this mess? So mm-hmm. not, as, not only is creativity a wonderful thing for entrepreneurs and a wonderful thing for innovative thinking, but it's a wonderful thing to be able to be creative when you are um, in a locked closet that somebody just <laughs> shut you in and go, all it's right, true. let's not panic. I can, you know, get a crowbar or I can get an umbrella and wedge it, you know, something. So that creative... Um, to foster creativity is, is, is runs the gamut of, of, of uh, like I say, individual growth and development and needs mm-hmm. all the way up to being a, a, a wonderful contributor to society. That's so. true. That's very Absolutely. true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, and he was, um, he was, I really liked hearing how his, how he his came, journey. yeah, his journey about yeah. how he came to, um, to getting into that field, uh, kind of growing up loving sports, and as he looked back, his sports was a bit more unstructured and more pickup game mm-hmm. than this kind of sports machine that we all have now, with everybody's mm-hmm. got a you know the name on the back and the the regulation socks, and you know like he said, it's it's sort of like kids have become a commodity for for different um, for the liquor store down the street or whatever you know like you know there's just something uh, there's a whole industry built up around there's a huge industry built up around youth sports yeah and yes. and so and, and we kind of and, and I think uh, you, you guys probably know more than me because you've put kids through college um, or you're about to and that is that whole thing about the resume like how much time do you want them to have on a uh, a sports team so that you can get a good um, resume and you can possibly get a, a um, scholarship. It's like this whole machinery that's kind like of pushing these kids. And what he's saying is that it's not it's not in their best interest. No, it's, it's not, not in their best interest. It's not. But you, what we think it is, and they're not happy. They're, that's they're the not key. happy. Yeah. Yeah, and that's really what drove him. That was the sort of the yeah. initial piece was they're not happy. So what's going on? Right. And parents are happy. Growing up playing sports, but a considerable amount of my time was definitely playing things like Spud. We had something (laughs) called Block Chase, or we had two blocks worth of, you know, neighborhood where we would play chase. And it was a whole (laughs) thing. You could catch them, put them in jail, and then (laughs) rescue them. And, you know, we would play it for hours, hours, until it was so dark, you know. And it was like your parents like, all right, you got to come home now. Yeah. You know, or we or we didn't do sports all the time. Sometimes there there was a house at the end of the road that had a big barn, and upstairs in the barn there was there was a little stage. Oh, oh cool. my gosh! And we would put on these ridiculous plays <laughs> again for hours. Yeah, yeah. And yep, it, yep. we were totally unsupervised, mm-hmm. but we were down at the this the barn at the end at the house at the end of the road and, right, right, and um or right. we would be across the road there were there was a brook behind all those houses over there so we would just walk through everybody's yards and go to the brook that was out behind all those houses and we would catch frogs and yeah you yeah know. absolutely and we did that too we had so the unstructured play is i think the the key 
and building I, that more and he didn't say yeah. exchange one for the other right no. it was it was a it was a good blend and it sounded like you know 13 percent structured you know we can get you know get, don't get too crazy right. with the numbers 13 16 and 14 yeah. 16 with with the unstructured mm -hmm. were the adults that had the most creativity right so it was um and people that were 20 percent 21 percent structured and only 10 percent of unstructured had lower scores on their creativity. So um, it's an interesting association, one mm. that, that, you know, like how, how did he come up with it? Because he's interested in sports and why people, the parents and the children walk around well, unhappy. unhappy. And he was also interested in creativity and trying to see what are the linkages there. And I didn't have the chance to say this to him, but very creative, Matt Bowers. Very, <laughs> very, yeah, right. very, very creative. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. yeah, because, Go oh, ahead. sorry. Because yeah. um, he was talking about what are your goals, right? What are your goals when your kids play sport? What do you want? We talk about teamwork. We talk about learning leadership. We mm -hmm. talk about discipline, you know, that sort of sticking through and, and, and uh, perseverance and things like that. But are those the outcomes that we're actually getting? Apparently not, according right? to the studies. According the study, we're Who not getting known? those outcomes. Not only his study, but lots of studies yeah. are, are proving that those those character development things are not necessarily paying off to the degree that they, that we think they are. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of chasing after something that's not real. Right. The race so, to nowhere. The race so to what, nowhere. So what I, what I was also intriguing to me is, you know, what are, what are the successful, what are the characteristics of a successful life? Mm -hmm. And one of those characteristics is creativity. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of work backwards. Well, what are the different ways that you can foster, foster creativity? Mm -hmm. If that's one of those characteristics of a successful life. So, and and by successful, we don't mean we have a money. million dollars in no. the bank or, or a lot of... But happy, contributing to society, right, right. feel good life in Life well lived, yeah, living yeah. on purpose. Yeah, yeah. living yeah. on purpose. Yeah. yeah, so that would be yeah. a good definition for success in, under these circumstances. Yeah. And so create, having a, a, um, a creative bent of some sort is one of the things that um, is a hallmark of having a successful life. Mm -hmm. And so one way to foster that creativity is to find this balance in sports. Because, you know, Matt didn't say don't, as you just said, Wendy, he didn't no. say don't do s structured sports. Because there are valuable things yeah, that come absolutely. out of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. He's a big advocate for that. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Totally. Totally. Oh, and I loved this too. Because he was saying, well, if, if the studies show that we're not necessarily getting the things that we're thinking we're getting out of structured sports, what are we getting out of sports in general? And one of the things is creativity. And I would love to actually know what else do we get out of sports? Mm. Um, what are some of the other things that we hadn't thought about, hadn't considered, um, are kind of outside, mm. outside the, you know, what we would expect the ones that the, yeah so let's put our assumptions to the side about teamwork and right. character development and let's just put those to the side and leave them there and, and say maybe that's true maybe it's not let's take a fresh look at what do structured sports actually bring to bear mm -hmm. in current day and in, 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 in future times. And so by mm -hmm. this retrospective study, as we say in, mm -hmm. in uh, study terms, mm -hmm. by going back, you know, he can't talk to kids when they were 12. Mm -hmm. He's talking to adults and saying, recall how much time right. you spent. Right. Recall, you know, all these things. And here's a test to test your creativity, you know, now. now. Right. And so we're going to draw associations. And he said, and he, he used the words, um, overwhelming or whatever like this this the, the, the it was an impressive statistical um significance right. it really right. demonstrated that there was a definite association between how much time in kind of that mixed bag rather than all structured right yeah, yeah. And, we, and we talked about you know the i think the pressure parents feel of i need my child to be this superstar sports kid you know they like sports they're good at it so there's this push to mm -hmm. have your kid be a superstar and i just find a lot of families have their kids in three different sports they're on another travel team they're on they're just there's really this pressure and is it the kid who wants it or is it the parent who wants it and, and yeah. what what is the goal because as he was saying very few actually get into college on a sports scholarship mm -hmm. and then of those who get into college on a sports scholarship very few make it a career oh, i mean it's even. it's definitely it's and not that you should discourage your child that that's what they really want and they're telling right. you this is what i want of course not you should uh, you know uh celebrate that and let them work as hard at it as they possibly can it wherever, and you, facilitate can. It wherever yep. you can but if they're not saying that it's you're thinking that then maybe you need to rethink about as he said um you know look at the research and what links up with successful outcomes and one of them he talked about was focus on process over mm -hmm. outcome mm -hmm. um, really teach uh, you know persistence and grit um, and mm -hmm. teach empathy 
yeah. and teach creativity. Yeah. So it, it, that may or may not be in organized sports, or it may be some in organized sports, it may right. be some other things, but not to underestimate the value mm -hmm. of that free play and unstructured play uh, that's so, so critical to mm -hmm. creativity. Right. Mm -hmm. And don't assume that your coaches are having these really in-depth conversations about grit and persistence and all that stuff with your kid. As he said, they are untrained volunteers. Absolutely. And they have their minds in, you know, like they were making up a schedule. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so not to assume that, oh, well, you know, my kid's going to have this wonderful coaching, literally, you know, um, of how to be a, a better human being. We have to take some ownership mm -hmm. as parents right. over, over, and, and bring, and bring, so what, how was that today? I, I noticed that you didn't make any plays. How did you? How did that work for you? What What was that going on? And persistence can come into play there. You know. So taking a more of an active role in. Well, actually, in, in I would what? I would take issue with the example that you just gave. Oh yeah. Yeah. I would. I would instead of saying I noticed you didn't make any plays, <laughs> I would say I really like how you got downfield on that on that free throw yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I so, guess. But if the kid know, were complaining specific. like I didn't make any plays, then I would just uh, that's what my I was going. Oh, but okay, yeah, okay. like making. So yeah. Okay. That didn't happen. But. But what's, what can we unpack or what can we bring out of that? And, and so that goes for anything, is to be kind of conscious of, and have um, explicit conversations with our children, with our spouses, with our friends, that are, um, as opposed to walking around making assumptions about how we, we experience this the same way. Maybe we didn't. Yeah. Maybe we didn't. And I think, I think the other caution, too, is that um, I think a lot of parents are having their kids do these sorts of things because... Um, they are living vicariously through their kids. Mm, close the door on that. Oh yeah, we've got we've got something going on here in the neighborhood. Excuse right me. Back. But I think that they're having their kids live. They're they're living vicariously through their experiences of their kids, which is um, a really dangerous thing to do because then you're putting yourself into what should be all about the kid. It's all of a sudden becoming all about you, and you may not even know that you're doing that. In fact, you're probably not aware of it. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend as a parent that you sit down and you write and you actually write down for yourself, why do I want my kid to be involved in this particular activity, whatever it might be? And then once you have an idea of what it is you're interested in, sit down with your kid. Don't show them your list. And just say, um, you know, let's let's take a look at our schedule. You know, this is a great time. We're we're doing this inter this uh, interview right now. It's um, May, and we'll be uh, posting it up sometime over the summer. And so this mm. is a great time for you as a parent to sit down and say, what's the fall we're lineup? Gonna we're going to look at our schedule this mm. fall. Mm -hmm. What's really important to you? And what do you value about your life and your time? And you know what? Even if your kid's 10, you can have an age-appropriate conversation about that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's my recommendation in terms of schedules. And it may be sports. It may be music. It may be, you know, um, debate club. Art. Maybe drawing. Video games. games. Video games. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we I mean, that's a, little, a, that's yeah. a whole other yeah. Yeah. issue that Piano we can talk about. Yeah. 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 So I, I hope he can come back and talk to us about that. Yeah, we'll definitely yeah. get him back for yeah. that. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I really think that that's kind of the issue is is or one of the issues is don't don't live vicariously through your kids. Make sure that this mm. is something that they really really want to do. And I know a couple of kids like that. I know and at least too. two kids who've been involved in gymnastics, and um, yeah, it's a killer. It's a killer. <laughs> gymnastics is a killer. And in both cases, the girls. I asked the girls. I said, so do you really love this? And in both cases, the girl said to me, I love it so much. Oh. I think about it all the time, and I just can't oh. wait to get there. Yeah. You know, that's great. Yeah. So the parents yeah. have facilitated yeah. that activity, and, right. and they've driven them around, and right. they've, you know, gone on airplanes to go to competitions in both of these cases. Well, one of these cases, the girl was actually um, hoping to kind of go to Junior Olympics and such. Um, she ended up having some injuries. But... Um, you know, and that's a whole other issue. <laughs> Sports yeah. injuries. Oh, yes. yeah. You know, I'm, Linda, yeah. our health expert, can talk about injuries, too. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Do you have anything that you can throw in? I, I don't well, know. I don't really, I'm not really an expert on injuries, okay. but I just know that uh, a lot of kids are getting concussions these yes. days. And they're getting injured, and they're being put right back in the yeah. game, you know. And right. I think it's, I don't understand that. Yeah. It just it boggles my mind. They're kids. They're right. kids. Let them heal. Right. And parents want to push them back in, right. too. And I don't know. Oh, I think there's some interesting things in um, uh, children's hospitals with like torn ACLs and things like that yeah. in, in, in greater number than ever before in history yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we're working our these young 
not fully formed bodies too yeah, hard, yeah. too hard and too rigorously. So I think that that, yeah, totally. That, That's a huge And problem. I would think mm -hmm. that that would inhibit their chances of being uh, any kind of, you know, a scholarship for sports or professional sports if they're injured, you know, injured and they're still having, having to repair all these injuries. It's, it's not going to bode well for their bodies <laughs> long term. No, mm -hmm. no, totally not. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the interesting thing is the bottom line is, is as in everything, balance is key. Yes. And what he, I like the way he said that. He goes, a good study always makes you go, duh, yeah. you know, like whatever. Yeah. So yeah, this is a duh, like try. But but many, but many families are being encouraged or whatever are, are deep in to the more organized sports, the better. So it might be a duh to some of us, but to some families, it's like, oh really. I shouldn't be pushing my kids so hard to be in organized sports to the degree that they are. So for that very reason, wow. we're glad that he was here. And I'm going to throw this out too, that a lot of it is our, the way our society is set up. And a lot of parents, um, let's face it, they'll use organized anything as, a, as kind of a babysitter while they're at work. Yeah, and, that's true. Yeah. you know, we have to acknowledge the fact that that's a real Constraint. life struggle. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You know, may, maybe they're instead of... A team sport, maybe there's an individual sport like karate or um, some other, you know, thing that a kid can do that, or uh, just swim lessons as opposed to swim team, or you know, yeah. you know, th there are other ways to in have your children involved in something that's organized that allows you to do the work that you need to do right. as a re as a responsible parent um, without putting quite so much pressure on your kids. So, you know, we're not telling you what to do. We're just <laughs> trying to. Um, Encourage, raise awareness. Raise awareness yeah. and encourage you to think about what's yeah. right for yeah. my family. Yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, for me always, uh, when I talk about food, for example, if you're just sort of um, buying food day to day, eating, you're not really keeping track of how much you're eating of this or that or other thing, you can be eating a lot of carbs, sugar, things that are bad for you, and you don't really know it because you think back and you go, I have people say, say to me all the time, well, I eat salads all the time, you know, but... It's like, well, what else are you eating, you know? <laughs> and so I think for me, this this sort of him putting together the statistics, mm -hmm. like, so it sort of puts into perspective, well, how much time are we really spending on organized sports and how much mm -hmm. time is my mm -hmm. child really spending um, on, you know, just active play mm -hmm. um, where they're they're not supervised and, and that, that it's important, so maybe I need to take a look. Because I think sometimes if you don't break it all down and, and do the pie chart or whatever yeah. and say, oh, wow, 30%, oh, my gosh, or 20% or whatever it is, didn't even know. Yeah, you know, right. I think you don't even know. So I think he's really bringing this up, and so it's a great the, – the statistics are there so we can start to evaluate as parents how much time are they spending and okay if that means that in the future potentially they're not going to be as creative maybe we need to reevaluate where Make the some time changes is spent. today yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to totally yeah. take home message for me yeah yeah, yeah absolutely great yeah. stuff yeah. yeah well this was a terrific conversation and we want to thank Dr. Matt Bowers from the University of Texas for being our guest this week um, we are the Mighty Married Moms. We've got Debbie Owen, Wendy Williams, and Linda Ty. And we would ask you, please, do not keep us a secret. So please make sure that you subscribe to us on iTunes. Leave us a rating and review. We would love that. And please share us with your friends and family. Because if you're getting something out of this, um, don't keep it to yourself. Let other people get something out of it, too. So we will look forward to seeing you next time. And have a great week. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Mighty Married Moms. Tune in twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays to meet fascinating and inspiring guests who will help you create the life you've always wanted. You can find these episodes and special gifts just for you at MightyMarriedMoms.com as well as a link to our Facebook community where we continue the conversation around the kitchen table. Please also help share the love by leaving a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.